What's going on everybody, it's Joel here, and today we're gonna to be running a 5K. So CrossFit.com actually has a 5K programmed for tomorrow, which is like the global CrossFit run a 5K day. It's like the most programmed wad in CrossFit.com history. Um, but I got stuff to do tomorrow and I don't really wanna run a 5K. I still wanna do my normal programming. Today is Thursday and I figure I could kind of use it as like an active rest day. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna need some shoes in order to run that 5K. And what better than to test out the brand new Rad R1s. So these are the running shoe from Rad. This is the almost white colorway. There was four colorways in the original drop. There was like, uh, lime, a purple, a black one, and then this white one. I think some of the colorways are still waiting to be stocked by Rad and shipped out. And I mean, this was like maybe two weeks ago now. I've had these shoes for about a week, or actually two weeks, and um, I haven't gone around to running just because, you know, <laughs> running is not really my thing. I'm not really a good runner. Uh, not that I dislike running, I'm just not really a good runner. So uh, it's hard for me to want to get up and go and run unless it was to test out some shoes. But anyways, enough about me. Let's talk about the R1s. So the upper on these shoes is interesting in that it's like a mesh kind of fabric around the outside. It's very pliable, it's really lightweight feeling. And then in the inside, you can kind of see like through the top and through the sides that there's like, there's like these lines. And those are like, they're actually plush in the inside. They're lined in that area. So um, I don't know if anyone's gonna go running without socks on in these shoes, but if you did, that actually might be pretty comfortable. Maybe that reduces like friction inside the shoe, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, that's, I found that was pretty interesting with these. There is a toe cap, it's like almost all the things in the shoe are kind of asymmetrical, which is pretty interesting. It, it like gives the shoe a little bit of character. So the toe cap is asymmetrical and goes a little bit longer through the lateral side and then right through the front. Uh, obviously, you know, this is a running shoe, so we have a pretty good toe spring angle. Not a huge toe bumper or not too much rubber in that area, but it's there and it's got a little, a little red logo there, so that's a nice little touch. And then around the back part of the shoe, we have a material heel counter, which once again is asymmetrical, so it's a little bit greater in the medial side of the shoe. I wonder if that does anything for the pro, like pronation control or anything, but uh, these shoes are supposed to be neutral running shoes. We have uh, some more overlays at the lateral side, kind of like a little sidewall there with the red logo that's embossed, which also looks really cool. The ankle collar on this is very cushy as well as the tongue. And what I really like about these shoes is that the only part that they have like a suede material is on the tongue. So uh, they should, I would say, stay clean better than like the normal ones. The suede is a dust magnet. And um, that was like my number one complaint with those shoes. And inside the ankle collar, it says tuned for the future. So the laces on the shoe, pretty standard laces, flat laces, um, nothing special about them. I, I don't know if I really need to talk about those too much. And then we have pretty standard lacing system. Um, the, lam the eye stays are laminated throughout, and then there's a little piece of felt under it. And let me see if I can spot anything through the sides. No, it doesn't look like, doesn't look like there's any kind of like cables that pull through the, the sides of the shoe to give you that kind of like customized fit. Uh, but I have them on right now on my other foot, and I think they fit just fine. And then the star of the show, with these is the Swell Foam N2 midsole. So this is a, a bio-based midsole. It's partly sugarcane, and that's you know the whole thing with Rad is that it's like sustainable footwear. Um, so this is like a nitrogen-infused midsole, and it's supposed to be something that's going to give you a good enough 
pop for like interval work, but I think it's more of a cushioned kind of long distance runner. At least that's what it feels like to me. Having them on, it feels like more of a cushioned runner. It's not like completely mushy or anything. I actually have the Nike Invincible runs on my other foot to kind of just like test what they feel like. And I think that the reds are slightly more, um, I want to say dense. They don't feel quite as mushy as the Infinity runs. Uh, the stack height on these is fairly high. So you have a 24 millimeter stack height in the front, 32 at the back, and then you have an eight millimeter offset. Uh, they do feel tall, I will say that. They don't feel unstable though. It actually has a wide contact patch. Uh, and I, I, I really like that about the shoes. I prefer a more stable feeling shoe. And then let's look at the bottom here. There are rubber patches for like higher wear areas. So you have some right here at the heel. And once again, it's like asymmetrical. And then at the forefoot of the shoe and then throughout the middle part of the shoe, this is all exposed foam. So what that you know, is supposed to do is it actually cuts back on weight by uh, decreasing the amount of rubber on the shoe. So I think that's smart design. I don't know how that's gonna wear over time, but a lot of these new foams, they're pretty hard wearing. So uh, I, I don't, think that this is going to break down too fast in that, especially if it's longer distance running shoe. Um, so I got these in a size 10 and a half. My normal rad size, size 10 and a half, almost wear everything in a size 10 and a half right now. I feel like there's plenty of room in the toe box, but I do think they kind of run maybe a little bit short. And it might just be the socks that I'm wearing. It might be that they're just brand new. I need to break them in a little bit more. But the my four outside toes, not my big toe. My big toes actually probably has the most clearance with these shoes. Uh, they kind of make contact with the outer part of the shoe, like right around here. Um, so I would feel like maybe for the next pair, I might try a size 11. They fit well. They're not uncomfortable. There's plenty of space for me. I just feel like if I go on a run and my feet start to swell up, I might run into some issues with um, my toes running into the, you know, the front part of the shoe. That's just not really a feeling that I like. Another thing about these shoes is despite the chunky look of them, they are extremely light. So. I took these out and I was like, man, I thought they were going to be heavy. Like visually, they look like they would be heavy, but they're, they're really not. A size 10 and a half clocked in at 10.2 ounces. Let's check the grams here. 299 grams. So these guys, you know, despite what they look like, they are a lighter running shoe. So uh, I think for me, these are going to work out just fine because I am not a very fast runner. I actually I'm a very slow runner. So hopefully these are gonna work for my running style. And uh, I, I hope to just get this 5K done in under 30 minutes. I'm gonna do it around the park right next to my house. But anyways, I'll get back to you guys after I get my run done. Okay, so I just got back from my 5K, ran around the park a few times. I tried to do a mix of like running on the pavement and also running on like there's like a little kind of dirtish trail. Um, and I didn't really notice too much of a difference. Sometimes I run that and I notice that there is way less grip when there's like, uh, when, I'm, when I'm running on the trail. But today I didn't really notice it. Uh, I didn't really notice any difference in, in terms of like the way that it felt cushion wise either, which cushioning with this shoe I thought was great. I thought my feet for the most part stayed comfortable the whole time. Where I really noticed the cushioning was in pretty much my ankles, my calves, and my quads. At this point, after running a 5K, and this happens to me because I don't run a lot, and I don't run 5Ks a lot, and I don't run distances like that a lot, I noticed that I usually am cramping up after I run something like that. Right now, I feel great. Uh, the most noticeable thing for me is um, my ankles feel good right now. And with certain more narrow, less, uh, I guess, stability shoes, uh, I noticed that my, ankle, my ankles get really tired. Uh, and I didn't really notice that with these. The cushioning pretty much throughout the whole run felt great. 
I will say that they don't have a ton of like bounce. Like they're soft, they're pretty reactive, but like there's not like a, a lot of pop to them. Like there was no time during the whole run where I was like, oh, I can go faster. I can, I can run faster than, than how I am running. It was pretty much, you know, like one pace throughout the whole thing. And like, to be fair, a 5K run for me is a pretty long distance, so I'm not trying to really go fast at any point. Um, I even, even at the end of the run, I was like, ah, I'm just gonna, you know, just keep the same pace that I've been running. So I was like averaging like, I'm, and don't laugh at me, keep, Keep in mind, I'm not like a great runner or anything. The first 1K was like, I don't know, five something. And then after that, I was like holding like a 6, 6, 17, 6, 1 K. And then I finished the whole 5K in 31, 30. Um, so yeah, not like super fast, actually pretty not fast, but uh, I ran the whole time. So that was a, a huge plus. At no point in the whole run did I feel like I needed to stop or anything. Um, another thing that I want to circle back to is the way that the shoes fit. Uh, earlier I said that I probably would size up for my next one. I don't think I would. I, I'm thinking 10 and a half, the same as the trainer is the way to go with these or whatever your trainer size is, is the way to go with these. So earlier I was wearing them kind of loose, so I didn't really tighten them around my ankle. Um, and now when I started the run, I tightened them up a little bit more and my, my feet don't really make contact with the front of the shoe. Um, unless of course you're like, if I was like running downhill or something. I did notice when, uh, when I was running uphill, uh, these shoes were not like that great to run up a hill. The park has like some rises and falls and whatnot. And I, when I got to those, it, they just didn't feel so, you know, powerful running up the hill. Maybe I'm just tired or something, but. That, I, that was something pretty noticeable to me. Um, yeah, like having them on, like, and I was thinking maybe they feel a little bit similar to my Invincible runs, um, but having them on side by side, the Invincible runs have a little bit more bounce. I mean, they have a lot more bounce. Um, to me, the R1s feel like they were made to be kind of a safe running shoe. Like this is a running shoe for everyone. I think anyone can get into this shoe and they're gonna like running in it. Uh, there's no huge faults unless you're like a really fast runner, you wanted something that was like a fast shoe. I don't think this is like that kind of shoe. I think it's more of an all around kind of running shoe. Like you can, you can kind of go fast. You could run pretty good distances in this. Uh, it doesn't wear you down or anything. It doesn't become uncomfortable. The fit is pretty good uh, and the price point, now that it's $160, because when the shoe came out, it was $170, now it's $160. I think that's a fair price point for this shoe. I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh, it doesn't have a carbon plate or anything, you should get a carbon plate runner, but you know, like, carbon plate runners, I mean, at least in my experience, are, they, they're harder for me to run in because they push my pace up and then I can't sustain that pace, so then I just slow down. Plus they require some breaking in. Uh, sometimes they, they're pretty rigid initially. For this, like I could get up, I just ran my five, did like a little short warm up on the way to the park and then I ran my 5K and I was good from there. Uh, so I think that, like I said, this is a shoe for everybody. It's a, it's a good running shoe. I don't think it's like, like stellar at anything, but that's probably what makes it a good running shoe because it's all around good. Uh, I don't really see any faults here, unless of course you wanted to like run really fast or run fast paces. But that was just one 5K and I've still got a lot to test with these shoes. Definitely want to get some more runs in with them. I don't know if I'm going to use these shoes to do like Metcons or anything. I know sometimes uh, if I, I feel like the shoe's pretty stable, I'll use it to like to do a light Metcon. But for these, I think I'm going to pass on that. Even though they, they are fairly stable, like and the ground contact's pretty good, they don't feel like something that I'm gonna wanna throw around a barbell, maybe a wall ball, but I mean, I'll leave that for my training shoes or something that was actually designed to be, you know, cross-trained in. But yeah, so far so good. Uh, they do have some colorways still in socks, so if you wanna grab them, make sure that you do grab them uh, because, you know, rad stuff does have the tendency to sell out. So 
Yeah, if you guys have any questions about the Rad R1, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And as always, guys, please hit that like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.